It's so soft, I'm so excited. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm Carla, if you're new here, I make crochet content, life abroad content, and I publish video essays. So if you're interested in any of that, please do subscribe. We're almost at 1,000 subscribers, and I'm very happy because I'm really loving the wholesome community we're building here. But yeah, let's get into the video. So today we are going to work on recreating my very first <laughs> crochet project using this beautiful mohair yarn that my parents got me for Christmas. And then this, the reason why it looks like a cartoon yarn ball for a cat is because this is the frogged yarn from my very first crochet project, which was just a rectangular construction crochet beanie. And now we are doing super advanced construction with a weird free pattern I found that has a lot of bad comments because people didn't like how confusing it was, but we're figuring it out and we're doing slip stitch only, which has been painful at times, but I think I figured out like how to hold the hook and the yarn in a way that doesn't hurt me too much. So it's not a rectangular construction. It's kind of like you make peaks and then those peaks are seamed together and then you seam the long end and then you get less bulk than you do with the rectangular beanie construction where you make a rectangle, seam the short ends, and then like bunch up that top part. And that actually adds a lot of bulk there. And this, you actually connect those peaks, like the corners, as you go. And you just do that a few times and eventually like this will look like a hat that's just open on one end. So much more advanced construction than the rectangular one. And I'm really excited to see how it turns out. That's not what I didn't like about my very first crochet project. What I didn't like is that I think for a while I was accidentally missing the last stitch. So my beanie started to go like this. And when I was crocheting it, I was like, is it just looking like that because it's not blocked? Again, it was my first crochet project. And I thought, okay, maybe it's because it's not blocked yet. Or maybe it's just because the tension isn't even and it's like bunching up. But no, I was literally making like a <laughs> triangle and then I think once I tried to fix it, it was too late. It took me so long because it was my first project and then I wore the beanie like a few times but it just looked completely wonky. But so far this is looking beautiful and I'm actually marking the end of each row so that I make sure I work into the last stitch because it's a bit hard to see. And this is completely slip stitch crochet so it's going to look a lot like knit and I'm so excited. Yay. And sometimes I use like a DIY crochet tension ring that I made. I'll show you right now actually. This ring is actually like a ring that I got in Amsterdam. And I actually never really liked it that much. I was just, I had just started my collection. So I was like, I need to get a ring anywhere I go, even if I don't love it. And now I don't do that. And I just bent it <laughs> with some jewelry pliers. It doesn't work amazingly, but it gets the job done. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. I'm going to make a coffee and take you along with me and let's just have a cozy time. Okay, bye. And I just got it caught in my hair. Ow. <laughs> This coaster is the same exact yarn as my very first crochet project. So best case scenario is that the amount of yarn I used for my very first, oh my gosh. I was so scared I almost threw that in the peanut butter or in my coffee. Best case scenario is that the amount of yarn I used for my very first crochet project. Worst case scenario, I don't have enough. And hopefully if I frog this little coaster I made just when I was practicing how to crochet in the round, that I can use that for the rest of the beanie, but let's see. Hopefully I don't have to frog this, but I'll keep you updated on that. like the feeding hand for my crochet and my feeding hand for my yarn is killing me like it hurts so much <laughs> not that that bad I've had worse pain from crochet but 
Reminder to stretch when you're crocheting, especially with slip stitch, and especially when you're not changing the stitch. <sighs> but I have a lovely little candle burning, and I have my lovely roses. They're lasting pretty long, they're just from Sainsbury's, but I'm trying to get back into the habit of buying flowers every week. I'm actually on the final set. The way the pattern's written is a little bit confusing, and basically the pattern maker refers to them as like two different sets of short rows and they're done differently. And basically you do the first set of short rows and then the second set of short rows and then she tells you to repeat that four more times. So I'm on the fourth repeat. So you do five sets of those two different types of rows. I don't know why she calls them that, but I'm on the final set, I guess. So that's quite exciting. I think the tension ring does help me a bit. And at first it's a lot slower to crochet with the tension ring, at least in my experience. And what's even slower than crocheting with the proper posture <laughs> is not being able to crochet at all because you're in so much pain. So I'd rather be a bit slower because I'm using the tension ring as opposed to being able to work fast but in a lot of pain and the next thing you know I like never want to crochet because I physically can't. So take your wrist and like joint and hand health seriously in life and in general, especially if you crochet, especially if you work on a computer all day. These things are important, you know? Okay, I'm gonna continue for the rest of the night. I'm probably gonna stop after this row actually because I am getting wrist pain, like I said, but I'll update you soon. Honestly, I should be done soon. Not tonight, <laughs> but I should be done soon and I'm really excited to show the final product. But as a sneak peek, we can see how much it wraps around my head. It's giving smurf. All right, thanks for watching. If you watch this part of the video, comment the yarn emoji. Let's just make it easy this time. Comment the yarn emoji. All right, see you soon. Today is the day, my friends. We are finishing the beanie. Yeah, I literally just have to seam the long ends of it. I'm going to try and do an invisible seam stitch, crochet stitch. I think I've done it before and I don't know why people don't always do it and like seem to make it over complicated because it's really, really easy. But we're gonna try that just to make it look as smooth as possible. It really does look like knit. Like, wow. And I don't know if you can see the texture very well, but we got that mohair in there. It's bougie beanie. And another thing to note is that I actually didn't even use all of the yarn from the original beanie. Yes, this kind of helped bulk it up a bit, but like this is as thin as floss, you know? So that didn't add that much weight. And yeah, I definitely wouldn't say that adding this accounted for not using this much of the yarn that was in the original crochet beanie. So I'm quite happy with that. And I think that also proves a little bit that slip stitch similar to knit might use less material than like a single crochet, double crochet, whatever. I'm gonna show you me seaming it now and then I'll try it on for you, obviously. Not me talking crap about why people don't do this stitch and then like hesitating to actually start <laughs> to seam it. But we're starting. Look, I just threaded this tapestry needle. Honestly, I usually ste steam. Honestly, I usually seam my crochet items with a smaller hook than I was using to crochet, but the tapestry needle is definitely a lot more useful, especially if you're just gonna be going like this. You can kind of go back and forth, whereas with a hook, your wrist naturally has to do a lot of twists and turns. So we're using a tapestry needle. We are being responsible crochet adults. Another thing with seaming is that Yes, this is an invisible seam, so I could do it with another color, but I want it to look as seamless as possible, so I'm using the same color, and it's so hard to see where I already worked into. But it's okay. It's a small project. It's a beanie. It's not going to take that long, I don't think. I'm going to come back later. I 
it's finished. I'm not gonna lie, I kind of freaked out when I finished it because I did the whole scene and I filmed that and I showed you guys. And then I was like, this, like the foundation chain and my very last row weren't lining up. And at first I was like, there's n like, how did I mess this up again? Cause that was my problem with the first beanie and my very first project that like my foundation chain, my last row were completely different sizes cause I was slowly sloping in and decreasing without even knowing what a decrease was. I was like, there's no way I did that. I was putting stitch markers at the end of each row, like making sure I worked into every single stitch. I was really, really meticulous and I was just freaking out. But what it was, was a lesson in tension. So my foundation chain, I did pretty loose. I have a bad habit of doing a really tight foundation chain and then the first row is just always a nightmare or then like that first part of the project is kind of cinched in because I was working into such like a tight foundation chain and then was trying to go from there with like a regular tension or a looser tension so what happened this time was my foundation chain was like much looser than my tension at the end of the beanie so that was a bit annoying and kind of freaked me out so I undid the whole seam that I did like before I did the cinching at the top because I was like this isn't right and I also don't believe that I did it that unevenly or like that I missed any stitches so I undid the whole thing thank god I didn't use mohair for the seam because that would have been a nightmare to undo because all the fibers like mix together with mohair so it's really hard to frog it even if you're just doing like a seam which is not a lot of twists and turns and I redid it I pinned like the final stitch of the foundation chain and the final stitch of the last row together so I would know like how much I have to kind of stretch my last row to fit into like the longer foundation chain and it definitely resulted in not that pretty of a seam but this is still a world better than my original beanie I also got a little scared because when I have it wrong side out I thought it would pretty much fit the same, but it feels so much smaller when I have it the wrong side out for some reason. But this is right side out, and like clearly it goes down past my nose, which is more than enough to fold like a cute little brim and like get a lot of warmth up there. And it also just feels so much lighter than the original beanie. Like the original one is just so dense same weight and everything but it felt way denser and like really really lumpy up here which was the whole point of doing this more complicated construction as opposed to a rectangle construction it's time for school to get out oh wow school's already out um yeah So when I have it on, it just feels so light. And I don't think I'm gonna put in a satin lining in the end. I think I'm fine with how it is. And like, it's such a nice yarn. I don't wanna like sew something onto it. And honestly, it feels really like fine on my hair. Like I just conditioned, had like a bit of a wash day. Yeah, yesterday. And I mean, obviously my hair is not gonna look good after I take off the beanie, but it still feels like really soft. So I think because it's all natural fibers, it's not like, messing with my hair too much i could be completely wrong but i feel like it's fine and just to show you what it looks like if i wear it with the wrong side out like for some reason it's like giving the berlin the berlin beanie vibe i do think i'm gonna block it i don't normally block stuff but especially because my tension changed a bit towards the end i want these stitches to all be like straight and have like perfect stripes um but i'll do that another time Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you got this far into it, comment comment the fish hook because I look like a fisherman right now with my beanie and my stripes. But please do subscribe. I'm Carla's Calling Everywhere. I post crochet content like this as well as video essays. Thank you so much for being here and I hope to see you next time. Bye!